coffee. Some people love it, some can't live without it, some are tea people. Today, I'm here at ASTAR Sivbi to find out what actually makes coffee taste like coffee and whether there's a secret in creating the perfect brew. For all you coffee lovers out there, come with me to find out more. Oh, oh. Oh, this is really a mind-blowing experience. To help me on this coffee quest, I have with me a food scientist, Dr. Aaron Tong. Hi, MJ. Welcome to ASA Safety. So, Dr. Aaron, can you share with us a little bit more about what you do here? Sure, MJ. So, our research areas in, in Safety focuses all about food, all the way from the upstream ingredient production using biotechnology to fermentation and even the food process engineering, how to make the food products and what happens to you as a consumer after you consume these food products in the clinical nutrition group. My personal area is on flavours, what drives taste and what drives smell in the food products. Does it mean that we can technically extract flavours and put them into any food we want? Of course, you can even do them right now. For example, you can go down and buy some durian extract, mix them into your chakwe tiao and you get durian chakwe tiao. The most important thing is how do we then create nutritious and sustainable food products that also taste good to you as the final consumer. So let me show you how it's done. Okay, let's go. Durian Cha Kui Tiao, here we go. So MJ, when we talk about flavour, flavour is not just about tasting with your taste buds. Actually, your sense of smell, and even the texture and the mouthfeel is plays a very important role to complete your entire sensorial experience of the food. Mm. Right, let's do a little test. Test? Now? Now, right now. So, can you please put on this bear mask and this nose clip? Can I see ya? Now we're gonna have some food products. They are all edible, right? Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this! <laughs> Alright, oh, what's that? Okay. What's that? It's something citrusy, so orange? Yeah, it's orange. Alright, so let's try one more. This is a liquid. Alright. And give that a taste. All right. What's oh. that like? Oh. Oh, this is a strong one. <laughs> it actually tastes a bit like cough syrup. <laughs> cough syrup. Find out that it's cough syrup. So actually, if you take off your mask, this is actually extract <gasps> of vanilla. It's a vanilla extract? Yeah. This? This is vanilla. See whether you can smell it now. Ah, mm. okay. Now it makes sense. Mmm, yep. <gasps> So without the mouthfeel, without the texture, right, you're, you're left with a lot of the components that are missing from, from what a vanilla should be. Mm. And that's why it's very, very hard to tell what a vanilla extract should, should taste yes. like or smell like, right? Yes. Wow, this is mind-blowing. When I cannot see or smell the food, some of them taste very flat. But when I can finally see and smell the food, the difference becomes much more apparent. That's really interesting. So, Dr. Aaron, now that we know the importance of scent in flavour detection, what's next? So, in order to find out what is driving the scent, what is giving the food material its particular aroma, we first need to extract it out, right? And how we do that is with a setup called distillation. Uh, what we have in there is coffee beans. Oh, right here? Yeah, you can see the coffee beans. And what happens is that you have a flask of water that's being heated. This generates the steam. The steam passes through the beans, extracts out all the volatiles which then goes over, condenses, and falls into the receiver flask. So, here's the water that's being extracted out. It's transparent. Yeah. It's actually what gives the aroma, what gives coffee the aroma. It's really all these colourless molecules that are floating around in the water itself right now that's all been extracted out. And all that's left behind is this dark black colour. But in fact, all your flavour is in here. Okay, so I have a question. There's many flavour compounds swirling inside here. How do we identify what gives the flavour in food? So we have a special machine that will take in the, the flavour compounds and separate it out. And then you can smell these different volatiles as they come out of the machine. Right? That way you can identify which of the particular molecules gives the particular flavour to the coffee. There's a special machine? There is a special machine and you can try it out. Let's go try it out! So MJ, this is the special machine I've been telling you about. Wow, it's huge! Yeah, and what it does is it takes the aroma compounds that we just extracted out and it separates them and delivers them to your nose so that you can smell and we can identify what are these molecules that are driving these aromas. So 
So I want you to go closer, right? Put your nose next to the, the nose cone, right? And give it a sniff. Oh, right. I'm smelling something. It's, it's a little bit nutty. Now it's like the wok hay smell. Very smoky yeah. aroma. Uh, this smells a bit like... Like rotten egg? I don't know, like eggs. <laughs> It's a red oh. eggy, oh, yeah. or sulfurous. Oh, it's sulfurous? Oh. Yeah. This is really a mind-blowing experience. Like, who knew that a smell is not just a smell, it's made up of a lot of different smells yeah. together. Wow. So now that you have all of these aromatic compounds extracted, can you actually modify them and then put them back into the food? Yeah. So in fact, that's one of the angles of our research here. We need to understand what is present or missing in the alternative compared to the real thing. And so to do that, we analyze and we see what are the differences so that we can able to, to put them back in through biotechnology or fermentation processes to not just make sure they are sustainable and healthy, they also taste good for you as the final consumer. Wow! So MJ, do you know that coffee can be fermented to produce new flavours? Fermentation? Yeah. Isn't it for food like wine and kimchi? Not just wine and kimchi, but actually a lot of our everyday food, from the chocolate that you eat to the coffee that you drink, are in fact fermented. So when you go to a cafe and you look at the beans on offer, usually you'll see two kinds of processes for coffee. In the first case, it's called the dry process. The coffee cherries are first dehulled, and then the beans are then sent for, for drying and then roasting. If you go to a cafe, they might have something called the washed beans. In these processes, they take the coffee cherry, they wash out all the flesh, and they leave the beans to soak. It's starting to ferment, actually, and new flavours, new aromas are then created. They are very different from the normal type of coffee. Oh wow, I didn't know that fermentation is such an important process in food production. Yeah, indeed. And in fact, fermentation is not just used for flavour, it's also used for nutrition. We use fermentation to create things like proteins, things like carbohydrates and even the fats. And we incorporate all these microbial nutritional components and put it into our food products for people like you and me to eat. Speaking about food, I think it's now time for a Kopi break. We are going to be tasting a few different types of coffee, including the beans that have gone through the fermentation process that Aaron and his team have worked on. So to join me in this test, I have two coffee enthusiasts with me, Haresh and Marvin. Hello, hello guys. Welcome, welcome. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yes. Okay, once you guys are ready, let's go! Let's go, let's go. Well, to throw our senses off even more, we'll be doing the taste test in specialised testing stations under special conditions. These specialised lighting and isolated booths will allow us to focus more on using our sense of smell and taste. So, without further ado, let's begin! This one is the Kopi Tiaman. Confirm. Confirm. Years of Kopi Tiaman experience. There's like a fruity notes to it. So... Ah, I know what's this already la. Hello guys, we're back here with our answers. We have Dr. Aaron here who will tell us what are the five different types of coffee that we have tasted. Alright, so we take it from the top, we look at A. The answer is... Instant coffee! <laughs> yeah, instant coffee. Ah, I know what's this really la. So it's instant coffee, yeah. So now we're talking about E. So the answer is it is synthetic coffee. Yay. So the synthetic coffee, in fact, is not made of any coffee beans. There's no coffee beans in there whatsoever. Really? Yeah. So I'm I'm very impressed that you you even think it's dry processed coffee because those are very high end beans as well. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> because it really tastes like coffee. It really tastes it really like coffee. Tastes it really. Tastes like coffee. Tastes like coffee. Really. So the flavor of coffee is very difficult to replicate, as you smelled just now. There's a hundred different compounds in there that, that give rise to the flavour and smell of coffee. So imagine you're trying to create a sustainable coffee product without using the coffee bean. It's a really an uphill task. In fact, we are working with an A-Star spin-off to be able to enhance and improve the flavour of their sustainable coffee option. 
it is very possible that in the very near future, we could all be drinking sustainable coffee that is customizable to our own likings. Yeah. So, Dr. Aaron, what would the process be if you want to enhance or reduce a certain flavour in the food? In order to do that, we first need to understand how the food is produced in the first place. For example, behind me, I have the extruder machine. People put the, the plant protein ingredient into the machine and it extrudes out of the machine. You get this very Ooh. nice patty, which you can then chop up to form your chicken nuggets, mm, for example. Okay. So some of the newer plant-based meat products on the market, you see that they have a bit more red colouring and this is in fact a technology that's been developed to produce a red colour from soy protein itself mm. and that helps to simulate the blood, the bleeding effect. Plant-based products have another problem though. They have a lot of unsaturated fat in them, which is great for nutrition and health. But unfortunately, these things oxidize very readily to give you that beany, grassy type of odors. So in order to reduce the amount of these kind of aromas, you can, for example, do a heat treatment, which kills some of the enzymes that are producing these off flavors. So different kind of technology you can use to either enhance or reduce certain notes to make your final products. Oh wow, the future of food and flavour looks really promising and it has indeed been a very flavourful experience. Very flavourful indeed. To summarise it all, research in Dr. Aaron's field relating to bioengineering is really important and it also helps in finding innovative solutions for our food security. As more and more future foods are being developed, science plays an important role in ensuring a good food sensory experience in our food and that is really helpful when it comes to consumers' acceptance towards novel food products. The next time you guys drink another cup of coffee, we hope that what you have learned today will help to add another dimension to your sip. A big thank you to Dr. Aaron for being our guide and to ASTAR for organising this tour. If you guys have any burning questions, do ask them in the comment section below. Also, do remember to like, share and follow ASTAR TV to find out the coolest and latest science discoveries cooking up in ASTAR's labs.